Hello and welcome to week two of uh, Change and Organizational Management for Valley College. Uh, last week, hopefully, you were able to find your way around the materials and uh, you're caught up and uh, we're ready to go for week number two. Uh, change management is something, as we said last time, that you don't bring with you a lot of institutional knowledge, things you've learned, classes you've taken. So this is kind of a, a very new endeavor for most of you unless you've worked in the business world. So it is important that you do the daily readings and we have a chart set up for that and the daily lectures as they're provided for you to get a, a base understanding of what's involved in the industry uh, business world as we attempt to uh, make changes to organizations. Uh, what most people don't realize is that an organization is almost a living entity. And if you neglect it and do not make changes and keep up currently with modern technologies and the things that are going on uh, in the world itself, you will fall behind and usually that will be irretrievable. It will be something you don't recover from. As I mentioned last time in the introduction, Kodak was a, was a uh, prime example of what that was like. Now, let's talk about change a little bit. Let's think about that this week as we begin to talk about how you diagnose institutional problems. I think you probably have worked for businesses where they were not well managed and there were problems and it makes for a miserable existence and that tends to bleed over onto employee satisfaction, uh, turnover. Turnover is a very expensive part of uh, company management Losing employees that you have invested in uh, to train are, is a huge loss to any business. We have to learn to manage change. BMW's mantra was the only thing constant about BMW was change. Uh, that was very true. Change happened sometimes uh, day by day, sometimes week by week, month by month, but sometimes hour by hour. We would be building cars and they, an engineer would come down the line and say, we've changed this part, we're now gonna put on this part, we're gonna do it this way. You have to learn to manage change. And I would say to you that if you're hoping to work in the business world of today, that's gonna to be one of the great efforts that you're gonna to have to make, and that is that you're gonna to have to manage change. Now, we don't like change. We don't like to see, we like things to stay pretty well the way they are and go in every day, do the same things over and over, go home when our shift is done, and. And change is just not something we look forward to in life. But human processes are going to require it if we remain uh, uh, able and a fighting force for the future. Many of you have seen the news of uh, American car companies closing plants in the Midwest and in Canada. A lot of the reason for that, that they fell by the wayside and became not nearly as efficient or even build as good a cars as say their European counterparts was the fact they did not change and they did not manage change well. They became a very top heavy organization, lots of white collar, uh, as we used to say, there's 10 chiefs uh, for every Indian on the floor or whatever. Uh, but they did not manage well and did not keep a lean uh, organization that could respond to the the vicissitudes of the of the marketplace. So we want to think about during this week also some of the interpersonal relationships, the group processes that are involved. How do you change a company? And of course, the larger the company, the more difficult it is to change. And you have to have employee involvement these days. I've spent untold hours uh, taking uh, teamwork training or taking black belt training or taking empowerment training. How do you empower your employees in a factory or a business to be able to make decisions, uh, to make the changes? Because the most, the people who have the most insight into what's going on in a business are the people working on the floor. They can usually tell you exactly what the problems are. The problem may be that we don't elicit those people. You want to bring those people in and you want to design work in a way that number one saves time. It is the least stressful on your employees. You get the best quality out of it and you save the most money. Of course, saving money 
uh, today is almost as important as making money itself. So it is very important that these factors be taken into consideration. And as we look at this week, of course, we will we'll talk about those. Thanks.